Hi guys, I'm standing here in the Gneisenau Straße number 66 and we will visit Big Rap now. They do big time 3D printing and we will talk to René, one of the founders, and he will give us a tour and tell us what Big Rap is all about. Let's have a look inside. Hi René. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And Hi. thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. I would say we go right in. So tell me, Janine, what is Big Rep actually all about? So, Big Rep is the manufacturer of the largest FDM yeah. printer, so 3D printer in the world. Uh -huh. We uh, were founded uh, at the beginning of last year, mm -hmm. so around about 15, 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. Started off with just a couple of people, three or four people. And, uh, well, now we are almost 40 people. Wow. We have a thousand square meters here in Kreuzberg yeah. in our loft. I'll show you around a little bit. Big Rep is about big big prints and big yeah. samples as you can see here yeah, yeah. this is fairly cool um, it's quite heavy also right? it's very heavy yeah. yeah it's probably 15 18 kilos yeah. and uh, absolutely nobody else in the world is able to to print at this price that we are able to print right now so we are disrupting the 3d printing world right now All right and here you can see some samples that we printed uh -huh. that we're actually using on trade shows worldwide. This is actually the Mars, the original Mars. We downloaded the data from the NASA website All right. and printed a Mars for ourselves. Cool. And how does it work, the data? I mean, everything that is open source you can use and print then, right? Well, uh, you find lots of market uh, places right now, like mm -hmm. Thingiverse, which is owned by MakerBot, and okay. uh, thousands of designers upload their designs, and, you, mm. and they're usually free to share. Yeah. And we just download them, or we create our own content and All our right. own stuff. Here's our mechanics and electrical department. So uh -huh. we have our own R&D people on board. Uh -huh. We develop all the printers by ourselves. Um, we all design right. them, we test them. Um, but since we're so fortunate to be very successful in our business, we're yeah. not producing them ourselves anymore. Okay. We have a partner that is actually producing them near Munich. So near Munich, okay. Yeah. This is how a hardware startup in Berlin yeah. should look like. Uh -huh. um, as most of you know, there are not too many hard hardware startups. Uh -huh. There are more and more coming. I, I would probably say we're one of the largest ones mm -hmm. right now with 40 people here on board. Uh, we have a solid funding. Uh, well, of course, we're always in funding rounds yeah. Yeah, like everybody in the startup scene and what we're doing here and what you can see here is um, where our tests for the yeah, final assembly and okay. testing is, is being done and of course so basically what we did is what was invented five years ago from the uh, open source and rep rep scene mm -hmm. back in the days in New York uh, so if some of you know MakerBot or Ultimaker as small printers, this is basically the same technology, just supersized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very sturdy machine, mm -hmm. and uh, there was there's only one um, manufacturer right now in the U.S. who has a similar printer than we have here. Okay. Their printer can print 0.9 cubic meter. We can print 1.2 cubic meter. Okay. Their machine is one million dollars, and our machine is forty thousand dollars. Made so in Germany. Made in Germany. <laughs> made in Berlin. Made, made in, in Berlin. Berlin. Yes. Okay. Cool. So why are you guys actually in Berlin? Our 40 people that we yeah. have right now, 10 are foreigners. So we have okay. somebody from Israel, from Sweden, from the U.S., from awesome. the Netherlands, huh. and of course they want to work in a cool city. If huh. we would be in Austin or Götting, mm. we would probably not be able to, to attract, attract this, this, yeah. this great talent. All right. Yeah, so here you can see we even have our own workshop. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, so uh, it's not only that our people are doing the design in uh -huh. front of their computer, but they, you know, anytime all the engineers can go to the back and start working okay. and uh, drilling tools, making their own little stuff, as you can see here. Yeah, so we have most of the machines available here, and if something uh, needs to be done that we don't have here, yeah. we even go to Fab Lab Berlin, and they have CNC machines, they have woodworking machines, and okay. all kinds of stuff. So all people go over there yeah. and use their machines. So awesome. this is how it should be in cool. Berlin. Plus, we have a great choice of uh, plastics that we are testing uh -huh. with, and we have stand standard stuff like this, of course. In uh, this is Big Red Orange. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually um, spools that we are using. Mm -hmm. If you know desktop printers, usually you, you would see little little spools like this. This uh -huh. is what uh, a desktop printer everybody uses uh, on a daily basis. But for big rep, that doesn't work. Big, we need big spools. A brand new space, a second mm -hmm. space, and we're very fortunate to have this because we needed to grow a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is actually called our studio space down here. Okay, it's a little messy today because uh, we're dispatching printers, as yeah. you can see here. This is this is how the printers are actually being dispatched, they okay. go into a big wooden box that we have over there uh -huh. and actually go all around the world. How do you ship them? By plane or yes. by ship? Or Usually uh, they all uh, go on plane, which mm -hmm. is uh, fairly expensive, a couple mm -hmm. of 
thousand uh, dollars usually per shipping, mm -hmm. but our customers don't want to wait. So okay. usually we have a lead time of eight to ten weeks. So after order comes in, it's ten around about 10 weeks before we uh, actually dispatch a printer mm -hmm. and then they want to have it immediately. Mm -hmm. To close with, do you have some advice for other people that think about founding a company and starting off? Well, we all know it's very, you know, you, you have to follow your dream and you have to work hard on it. The first year is probably the hardest. Yeah. Uh, I can promise all of you the second year is much better than the first year. The third year usually uh, it gets even easier. Um, I think Founding in Berlin is a good idea because mm -hmm. there really is a lot of money here, uh, mm -hmm. but you still need to have a great idea. If you yeah. don't have a great idea, you're usually unable to raise money. As I explained before, if you're in the hardware business, it's a little more complicated in Berlin right mm -hmm. now, but I think it's getting much better, especially if somebody is, uh, is uh, willing to do something in hardware, just send me an email or sure. visit us at BigRap. Have a look. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for your time yeah. and all the you're best welcome. for the startup. Huh? All the best to you. Bye, guys. Bye guys.